Word of God speak, would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty, to be still and know that your Ladies and gentlemen, this is Daniel White the third with the scripture and the sense podcast where I read the word of God and give the sense of it based on an authoritative commentary source such as Matthew Henry's commentary to give the sense this podcast is based upon Nehemiah 8, 8, where it says Ezra and the Levites read in the book, in the law of God distinctly, and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. The aim of this podcast is that through the simple reading of the Word of God and the giving of the sense of it, the church would be revived and the world would be awakened. Today we are reading Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 1. Oh, that my head were waters and mine eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place of wayfaring men, that I might leave my people and go from them, for they be all adulterers, an assembly of treacherous men and they bend their tongues like their bow for lies but they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth for they proceed from evil to evil and they know not me saith the Lord take ye heed every one of his neighbor and trust ye not in any brother for every brother will utterly supplant and every neighbor will walk with slanders and they will deceive every one his neighbor and will not speak the truth they have taught their tongue to speak lies and weary themselves to commit iniquity Thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. Through deceit they refuse to know me, saith the Lord. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will melt them and try them, for how shall I do for the daughter of my people? Their tongue is as an arrow shot out it speaketh deceit one speaketh peaceably to his neighbor with his mouth but in heart he layeth his weight shall I not visit them for these things saith the Lord shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this For the mountains will I take up a weeping and wailing, and for the habitations of the wilderness a lamentation, because they are burned up so that none can pass through them, neither can men hear the voice of the cattle, both the fowl of the heavens and the beast are fled, they are gone." And I will make Jerusalem heaps and a den of dragons. And I will make the cities of Judah desolate without an inhabitant. 
who is the wise man that may understand this? And who is he to whom the mouth of the Lord hath spoken, that he may declare it? For what the land perisheth and is burnt up like a wilderness, that none passeth through. And the Lord saith, Because they have forsaken my law, which I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice, neither walked therein, but have walked after the imagination of their own heart, and after Balaam, which their fathers taught them. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will feed them, even this people, with wormwood, and give them water of gall to drink. I will scatter them also among the heathen, whom neither they nor their fathers have known, and I will send a sword after them till I have consumed them. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider ye and call for the mourning women that they may come and send for cunning women that they may come. And let them make haste and take up a welling for us that our eyes may run down with tears and our eyelids gush out with waters. For a voice of wailing is heard out of Zion How are we spoiled? We are greatly confounded because we have forsaken the land, because our dwellings have cast us out. Yet hear the word of the Lord, O ye women, and let your ear receive the word of his mouth, and teach your daughters wailing and every one her neighbor lamentation. For death is come up, into our windows and is entered into our palaces uh, to cut off the children from without and the young men from the streets. Speak, thus saith the Lord, even the carcasses of men shall fall as dung upon the open field and as the handful after the harvestmen and none shall gather them. Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will punish all them which are circumcised with the uncircumcised, Egypt and Judah and Edom and the children of Ammon and Moab and all that are in the utmost corners that dwell in the wilderness. For all these nations are uncircumcised, and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in the heart. That was Jeremiah chapter 9. Now here is the sense of it, if you will, from Matthew Henry's commentary. Chapter Contents The people are corrected. Jerusalem is destroyed, the captives suffer in a foreign land, God's loving kindness, uh, he threatens the enemies of his people. Jeremiah wept much, yet wished he could weep more, that he might rouse the people to a due sense of the hand of God. But even the desert without communion with God through Jesus Christ and the influences of the Holy Spirit must be a place for temptation and evil 
while with these blessings we may live in holiness in crowded cities. The people accustomed their tongues to lies. So false were they that a brother could not be trusted. In trading and bargaining they said anything for their own advantage, though they knew it to be false. But God mocked their sin, where no knowledge of God is. What good can be expected? He has many ways of turning a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of those that dwell therein. In Zion, the voice of joy and praise used to be heard, used to be heard, rather, while the people kept close to God, but sin has altered the sound. It is now the voice of lamentation. Unhumbled hearts lament their calamity, but not their sin, which is the cause of it. Let the doors be shut ever so fast. Death steals upon us. It enters the palaces of princes and great men, those stately, strong, built, and guarded, nor are those more safe that are abroad. Death cuts off even the children from without and the young men from the streets hearken to the word of the Lord and mourn with godly sorrow. This alone can bring true comfort and it can turn the heaviest afflictions into precious mercies. In this world of sin and sorrow, ending soon in death and judgment, how foolish for men to glory in their knowledge, health, strength, wisdom, riches, or in anything which leaves them under the dominion of sin and the wrath of God, and of which an account must thereafter be rendered. It will but increase their misery. Those are the true Israel who worship God in the Spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Let us prize the distinction which comes from God and will last forever. Let us seek it diligently. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to the Scripture and the Sense podcast. I am your host, Daniel White the Third. My prayer for you, dear Christian friend, is to be revived. My prayer for you, uh, dear sinner friend, is that you would trust Christ as Savior, that you would repent of your sins and follow the Lord. Remember to read the Word of God each day and uh, pray without ceasing to God for wisdom to understand it and apply it to your life. May God bless you real good. Please stay with me as I share with you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you and we thank you for your holy word. Help us to love it, to cherish it, to obey it, to live by it, and to apply it to our lives and to share it with others so that others may come to know you as Savior. Save those who don't know you right now. By your grace, by the power of your Holy Spirit, and by the power of your Holy Gospel. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to the Scripture and the Sense podcast. Please remember to read the Word of God, the Holy Bible, each and every day of your life, and pray without ceasing to God about everything, and for wisdom to understand His Word and apply it to your life. Most importantly, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou, you, shalt be saved. Please stay tuned for a complete presentation of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ so that you can get your soul saved from hell to that wonderful place called heaven when you die. May God bless you and keep you is my prayer. Now, dear friends, if you're with us today and you do not know 
our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Allow me to show you how you can place your faith and trust in Him, Jesus Christ, for your soul's salvation from sin and hell. First, accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have failed God. We're all guilty before God. You do not have the right to look down your nose at others. You're just as wicked as others. Second, accept the fact that there is a penalty, there is a punishment for sin always. You will be paid for your sins one day. The Bible says in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. Our payday someday is death to these beautiful bodies. Death to so many things before you die. Death to marriages. Death to relationships. Uh, death to material things. You will experience a thousand deaths before you die because of sin. But ultimately you will die physically. Your body will be put in a cold dark grave. And that ought to be frightening because it is frightening. But more frightening is that your soul, if it dies without Christ, will go to a burning hell to spend eternity in a dark place, even though there's fire. You say, Preacher, I don't believe that a loving God would put people in the hell where Jesus Christ, the loving and lowly one, preached more on hell than he did about heaven. Jesus Christ, the loving one and the lowly one, preached more on hell than any prophet in the Bible. He said in Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Also the Bible says in Revelation 21, 8, But the fearful and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Whatever you do, don't experience the second death, because it's bad news. Hell is bad news, but I have good news for you. You don't have to go to hell. Jesus suffered and bled and died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day and he said these words to you before he left here for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish that is perish in hell but have everlasting life believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou you shall be saved pray and ask Jesus Christ to save your soul and to come into your heart and change your life. He will do it. Romans 10, 9 and 13 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou you shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ that he suffered and bled and died on the cross for your sins was buried and rose again and you're ready to trust him as your Savior pray and ask him to save you and he will I'll be glad to lead you in prayer in what is called the sinner's prayer or the prayer of salvation repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart let's pray Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner, and that I have done evil in your sight. I am guilty because I have broken your Ten Commandments, your law. I have taken your holy name in vain. I have dishonored and disobeyed and disrespected my own parents. I have lied many times before. 
I have lusted after people and things and what others have. I've stolen things before. Uh, so Lord, that's five to six commandments I've already uh, broken out of your Ten Commandments and so please have mercy and grace upon me. For your Holy Son's sake, Jesus Christ, please forgive me of uh, all of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart the best way that I know how in the Lord Jesus Christ. That he suffered and he bled and he died on the cross for my sins. Was buried and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul. And change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And help me to repent of my sins past. And help me to turn from my evil ways. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake. Amen. Now dear friend of mine, if you believed in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose on the third day, allow me to say to you, dear friend, congratulations on doing the most important thing in life. And that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to GospelLightSociety.com and read my pamphlet titled, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. And Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Dear friend, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, please email me at dw3 at gospelitesociety.com and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as 